Hello, I'm Blue, and today's video is the second part to how I draw faces. The previous video was about the structure and the planes of the face, and this video goes about facial features such as eyes, nose, and mouth, and where to place them on the face. I've decided to split the facial expression video into a separate video, since if I try to put that into this video that I'm recording today, it would be just way too long and take me way longer to produce. So keep an eye out for that. Also, I got a new mic, so if I sound a bit different, that's why. Before I start, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Wondershare Democrator. Wondershare Democrator is a two-in-one screen recording and editor. If you're like me and you get very intimidated with scary editing programs and their interfaces, the Democrator is effortless to use to make YouTube videos, reels, TikToks, and it's free to use. I use Democrator for all my videos, let me give you a quick rundown. Once you open up Democrator, you can use the all-in-one recorder to record your screen. You can see all the different sizes from TikTok Reels to YouTube to custom over here. Hit record and once you're done recording, just hit stop over here and it'll open up in the editor. Here you can cut clips, add audio, transition and text by simply dragging all those things into the timeline. They have plenty more features like green screen and pan and zoom and effects. This is both great for making speed paints, so you can record the screen and speed up the video, as well as the video you're watching today. If you're interested to try them for free, I'll have the link in my description. Thank you again to want to share, and now onto the video. Let's start with eyes. I believe that eyes are the window to the soul. It has always been the one thing in an art style for me that really brings expression and soul to a piece. In old oil paintings, the eyes always feel like they carry the most emotion. So, I'm a really big fan of making the eyes very expressive, big and captivating. But you have to know how to draw them and how to place them. So let me show you my interpretation of eyes. The eyeball is a sphere, a 3D ball. The way you can show this is by using center lines, both vertical and horizontal, on a round shape. Where the lines cross in the center is where the pupil will be. Eyelids sit over the sphere. Using the vertical line, you can determine where the two eyelids will meet more or less. There's an inner corner of the eye and an outer corner of the eye. The inner has a sharper point, while the outer is a lot thicker. The eyeball is round, so the eyelid wraps around a round curved object. That means angles will affect the way the eye and the eyelid looks. Now, this is guidelines. It's not necessarily important to draw this out every time, but it is interesting to keep in mind when you're trying to draw eyes without guidelines. I love thick pretty eyelashes, so I make the top lid a lot thicker and I buff out the outer corner. Eyelashes aren't the only thickness to an eye. Eyelids have a thickness to them, which I show with these lines. From the side, you'll see the thickness more clearly. This is kind of like the skin on top of the eyes. Like I mentioned a bit ago, with eyeballs being round, there will be foreshortening. So at some angles, you'll see more or less of the eye. For example, like with this eye that I'm drawing right here, the one side of it is a lot shorter compared to the other side, it's because the side on the right has foreshortening, so just less of the eye, or less of that side of the eye is visible. So from some angles, you'll see more or less of the eye, the eyeball, the pupil, or the eyelashes. This can also change the shape of the eye depending on where you're seeing it from. This is because of the sphere it's based on. Keep in mind the thickness of the eyelid and the eyelashes. This will make showing the angles a lot easier. What I mean by this is from the side, eyelashes will extend forwards. So you will want to keep in mind which part of the eyelashes extends forwards and will be able to be seen from like a different angle because of the roundness of the sphere and because it extends forwards. The eyelids also extend forwards slightly, that's the thickness to them. Eyebrows are just above the eye, they can be any thickness, but it is important to keep them relatively in line with the eye itself. Even with an intense emotion, it is not going to go flying off the face. The eyebrow is relatively the same size of the eye, and yeah. Now let's talk about eye placement. The eye sockets on the head sit in line with the horizontal line and they are equally placed from the vertical line. So the space between them is equal on both sides of the vertical line. 
the eye socket dips in. If you remember in the previous video, the planes kind of look like this. As you can tell, it dips in from the eyebrow line into the eye socket and then outwards slightly. So no matter from what angle I draw the head, the eye sockets will stay in place. You can use the guidelines to keep track of this. The shape will also make them appear differently from different angles. It's okay if it's hard to imagine, you'll get used to it with some practice. Now you'll imagine the sphere in the middle of the socket, like this. And using the method I just showed you, you'll add the eyes and the eyelids and the eyelashes. This is the easiest way to understand the eye, and this will also help with keeping track of where the eye placement will be and how you'll draw eyes from different angles. There are many different shapes you can play around with with using this method. Also, remember this is just to help build muscle memory and you won't always need to do it exactly like this. This seems like a good transition to talk about the facial feature between the two windows of the soul. The nose. I've broken the shape down into a simple triangle. It has an underneath, sides, a top side and a little bridge at the top. This is drawn from the actual nose. So I've taken reference from a nose and then I've broken it down into simple shapes, which is this shape. I've always found drawing the nose a little complicated, so this was the easiest way for me to understand it. Now noses can come in all different shapes and sizes. This is just the most generic nose shape for me. If you look at the face straight on, the nose shape I just showed you will start at the eye sockets with that little triangle gold thing at the top and end where the jaw starts or just around that area, so here. The nose sits in line with the vertical line. The nose is the part of the face that extends, so from the side view, the face will be a flat surface and then adding the nose and part of the upper lip will give it that extension. As you can tell, the triangle shape isn't just a triangle, it has a flat surface and then goes forwards, so that's kind of where the extension comes from. The triangle shape makes it a lot easier to be able to imagine what the nose is going to look like from a different angle. Like here, adding it to a face, I will determine where the nose is going to be using the guidelines. I'm looking at the horizontal line, so it will sit in line with the eye line. And using the vertical line, I will determine the positioning and where along the face it will run. And since I have the rest of the face planned out, I can easily tell where the nose will more or less end, which is around this area. which. I'd normally determine around the chin line, so around about from here upwards. Now this is a very simplified nose, a nose has a lot more shape to it than just this triangle. Like the nostrils and the bridge and the tip, which will change the way it looks and change the way your character's nose will look. I have simplified it to suit my style and frankly just because noses are very hard to draw. What I've done is I'll keep in mind triangle shapes I showed you, so like this pyramid shape, and then I pick part of the noses I will present. So I pick the point of the nose and the bridge, and I will show these two with simple lines, the original triangle shape that I used for the nose. And then at the top part and down the edges, I will draw a little circle to kind of show the thickness of the nose. This is kind of how I've stylized it. As you can tell, knowing the basic shapes and basic anatomy first is what helped me to be able to stylize it and be comfortably able to draw it from different angles. Just below the nose, we have the mouth. Now, I hate drawing mouths. They always come out looking a bit odd. That's why I only draw mouths as little triangles or just little stripes. I know, I've taken it the easy way out in the art process. But this is a tutorial, so I'll show you what I've come to think of with mouths. The shape of the mouth I determine using the teeth. It's two U shapes that sit on top of each other. These two U shapes sit inside the skull. The bottom U is the only part of the teeth that can move up or down. This will affect the jaw shape, so if your mouth is open, you'll want to draw the jaw kind of downwards as well. Or if the mouth is closed, you'd want to move the jaw up. So just keep that in mind, that this will affect the overall face. The two U-shapes are the teeth. I've sectioned them off as follows. The front have more shape to them, so I give them more 
sharper edges. While the back ones, I have more molar type, so they're more rounded. So they are rounded and I draw them by just using some basic sh circles. Now I do not draw each individual tooth, instead I focus on the, more of the outline of the teeth shape. The bottom teeth have a tongue that lays in between them. Tongues are very flexible so you can bend them how you like. Which can be a lot of fun if your character likes to stick out their tongue a lot. So these teeth will be affected depending on the angle you're looking at them from. Foreshortening is very interesting, so if you're looking at from a bottom angle, you'll see more of the top teeth and less of the bottom ones. But if you're looking at a more straight one, you'll see like, kind of like this kind of look to it, you'll see almost equal of both of the teeth. Or from the side, you'll see like the right side of the teeth, uh, like, like the examples I'm showing you here. The lips cover the mouth, so depending on how open the mouth is, this will determine how much you can see of the teeth on the inside. I'll keep a way of expressing a mouth for the expression video, but for mouths I like to keep them in a triangle shape. So uh, these two points on the outside and then they will go down into a point at the bottom. Here are some examples of different mouth shapes I use following that method. Now all these facial features really depend on the angle of the face. So really keep in mind what angle the face is from it will really change these facial features and they will all stay in the same line so if you're drawing face from a three quarter you'll draw the mouth from a three quarter the eyes from three quarter and the nose from three quarter